Welcome to my workshop. I hope you are all well. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you step-by-step -step process, including the software bit of creating fantastic looking maps, just like these. I call them mini maps from our adventures or places that we actually want to um, travel to at one point of our lives. So uh, yeah, mini maps on today's agenda and I'm going to be making them with the Extool F1 laser but you can do the same project with any laser, any diet laser or CO2 laser you may have in your workshop. So let's start. Right then, let's create our maps. First of all, we need to go onto our website called snazzymaps.com. It's free and you can do up to 10 maps, 10 downloads per day. Go on to create style, set it as default and press OK. Now what you need to do is find the place, find the part of the world that you want to create a map of. For me, it will be this business district in New York. I do have a bit of river here, a bit of greenery, and I think this will look quite cool. Once you establish what you want exactly, then go to All, then Geometry, and press Off. After that, go on to Labels and switch that off as well. With that done, we're going to go to Landscape, again Geometry, and then press On. And at this time, we want a custom color black. With that sorted, we're going to scroll down to Water. And we're going to go to Geometry again, and this time we're going to press On and change the color to white. And this is our first layer that we need to save to our hard drive. So download image just over here. Make sure the dimensions are at maximum. Horizontal, vertical and the scale factor is set to 3. Press download and that's your first layer sorted. With that done, press the X at the top just over here and we need to change few things out. We don't want water, so we're going to turn that off now. Go to Landscape, Geometry, we're going to switch that off as well as we want to have some roads. So go on to Roads now. And you do have few to choose, okay? First of all, the Highway, Geometry, we're going to switch them on and make sure they are in black. And that's our next layer. We need to download it, make sure the scale factor is set to 3, press download and that's your next layer sorted. Again, we're going to press the X in the top right corner and we're going to switch off um, the highways. Uh, again, go into geometry, on, make sure the custom color is switched to black. Sometimes the website works a little bit slow, so well, you need to give it a few seconds to catch up with you. And with that selection sorted, again, download this, make sure it's scale factor 3, and that's your next layer. Right, let's go back. This time we want the local maps, so switch off the geometry for aerial, local maps, geometry, press on, and again, change the color to black. With that done, we can download our final layer. One additional thing that you can do is in the points of interest select park and basically that will show you all the greenery um, in that area that you selected on the map. So if you want to have a bit of greenery or for example there's no water anywhere but you do have parks you can get that sorted as well and just download it as you do. However in my main design I'm not going to be using the park layer. Time to edit our photos. I'm using Inkscape, it's free. I'm changing the dimension of the base of the background to 110 millimeters by 110 millimeters. And that's our work area. We established that, so now it's time to drag in our first layer. In this case, it will be the one with water. The size of it, obviously, it will be much larger than our um, box. So we just need to, um, first of all, work it to the size that we need. However, before changing the size, what we need to do, we need to have a vector file. So go into Path, Trace Bitmap, change that value to 500, and then just press Apply. 
Now we're going to have two maps. One is a vector file that we're going to need for our project. So you can drag one to the side and the way, best way to check it is click on the node tool. The one with the nodes is the one that we want. Okay, as you can see, it's selected the nodes. The other one doesn't have the nodes. So make sure to delete that off as we're not going to need it. Now we can change the dimension of our map. And the easiest way to do it, as the top, you've got the sizes of that, just change it to, well, whatever design you want. However, in my case, that's going to be 100 by 100. And now you can drag it onto our background working area. Okay, now we can start editing this design to suit our needs. Um, as you can see, we do have some items that we don't necessarily want in our design. So a bit of Google text and on the right hand side, we've got some more text that we need to um, delete as well. So how do you do that? Quite easily. Select the note tool and select the design itself. Make a selection and press this tool that is called Break Path at Selected Nodes. And basically that will allow you to delete some of the nodes, not necessarily um, damaging the whole design itself. As if you were to delete um, particular nodes without doing that, it will start messing around with your design. So basically that will help you in deleting things that you don't really want um, in your design and you can amend everything that you want. So as you can see, I'm just deleting node by node until none of the artifacts that I don't want actually are deleted. In this similar fashion, I'm actually gonna be deleting um, the text over here. This one is not connected to the main design, so I'm just deleting the text on its own. Just selecting all the nodes and deleting them like so. You only can do this if you've got the node tool selected. That's located on the left hand side, uh, right at the top, just below the arrow. Now with these, you need to break the path again. As you can see, uh, just the nodes that were left there, we can delete them off quite easily. And I'm just going to continue doing so. Now, this may not be the best way of doing this. It's just the way I know it, and this is the way I'm doing it. As you can see now, I'm actually gonna be moving the nodes uh, to make sure I've got a full design. So I don't actually want to have this cutout that we had for the text itself. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm going, just gonna be dragging those nodes so they connect to each other. And in a second, I'm just gonna delete the remaining nodes so uh, basically that wide void will disappear entirely. And I'm just gonna be selecting uh, one by one, breaking the path and deleting them out. And just two left, again, break path and I can leave them be or delete them however you want. And now we've got noise and square edge. There you go, the whole text has now been deleted. And in this exact way, I'm going to delete any artifacts that I don't want to have on my design. So for example, you know, this map is very, very small. So very small parts of the, you know, things that would be problematic for the laser to actually cut out, I will delete. As there's no point of having them, they could only destroy our designs. Once you're happy with the design, the next thing we need to do is just a normal selection of our um, file itself with the arrow at the top. So we need to change it from uh, the node tool to normal arrow and go on to fill and stroke. In the fill section, we're gonna press X and in the stroke section, we're gonna select the first box, the first selection. Stroke aligns the um, thickness. I'm gonna change it to not point, uh, not six. I find that to be uh, the best value um, for laser cutting. And as you can see, we've got a nice uh, representation of uh, the surface that we're gonna be cutting out. 
And at this stage, if you do find things, items that, you know, you don't feel that they should be in your design, is the best way, best time to actually delete them off. For example, that little tiny dot, that would be absolutely not visible um, in our design due to the size of the map. It's only 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So definitely try to remove items that, you know, would be problematic for your laser to cut out. But again, if you're making a large map, these can stay as they shouldn't cause you any issues. Again, I'm gonna check the whole map over to see if there are any artifacts that I feel that should be deleted. Now what we need to do, we need to create some sort of a border, okay? Making sure that the laser will know what to cut out, what to leave in. So grab the rectangle tool and create a rectangle. And in this case, the size of it, I'm going to change it to 100 by 100, okay? That's the main design of our map. And I'm just going to shift the rectangle so it matches the design of our map. So they are basically aligned. However, if you are struggling with aligning your pieces, just select both of them together and go into alignment and then horizontally and vertically just align them together and they will be perfectly in the middle of each other. Now we're going to create another rectangle. This one will be a little bit larger. Uh, the dimensions now, I'm going to set it up to 105 millimeters by 105 millimeters. This will be the outer border of our design. And again, I'm going to select everything up and align them together. That will mean our design will have a nice 5mm border around it. Now we need to amend our design in such a way that the laser will know exactly what to cut out. Um, so only the water part, the part with the water will be cut out and everything else will remain. Okay. So what we need to do, we need to connect our main design with the first inner rectangle. To do that, select the inner rectangle and then press the tool that's called Convert Selected Object to Path. That will allow us to add additional nodes on that rectangle. And that will mean we can select all of them, break them apart with the Break Path tool, and then we can delete sections of the rectangle that we don't actually want. Otherwise, if we leave it on, the laser will follow those lines and cut things out that we don't really want. Right, let me just delete the uh, remaining parts over here and that's how it should look like. So we've got our outer border, outer rectangle, the ones that's a little bit larger, and the inner is creating a path for the laser to cut out um, the parts with the water. Now what we need to do, we just need to make sure they are connected to each other. So our design of the map with the remaining parts of the rectangle, okay? You just click on the nodes and basically drag them into position. And uh, they're quite flexible, so you have to watch out not to change them too much, okay? But uh, yeah, that's what you need to do. You need to have an established border for the laser to follow. And this is the final look of our piece with the water, where the middle part will be cut out. And underneath that, we're gonna have a layer that's painted in blue to, well, showcase uh, the piece of the water, okay? That's it. And you can save this as an SVG file. We also need the back uh, piece of our design. So delete the map off and the remaining lines of the inner uh, rectangle, okay? Just delete that off. What we are left with, it's the outside border that we need for the base itself. So go ahead and save that as well. And again, as SVG file. Time for the next layer, this time will be a local. And these will be engraved. So I'm just gonna change the size of this file to 100 by 100 now, before actually tracing the bitmap, as it won't really matter that much. As I said, we're gonna be engraving this. However, you can trace the bitmap first and then change the size of it. 
as you wish, okay? So again, path, trace bitmap, and just use this um, options that we had, apply. And as you can see, we've got a nice vector file with no background that we're gonna need. And the other one, the other file, we can delete off. Now I already do have the rectangle, the main background, which is 105 by 105. I'm just putting the map in the middle of it. Again, if you can't make it in the middle, just use the alignment tool that I showed you before, making sure that both of um, the uh, designs are in the middle of each other, horizontally and vertically. Now it's the time to delete uh, the text that I've got on this or any artifacts you don't want to have in your main design. Uh, again, same way as we did before, just select the node tool and just, just delete the nodes that you don't want to have in your design. Now, it, um, again, I'm not sure if this is the quickest way of doing it. I know that this works for me. If you know a quicker way, sound off in the comment section, help me and help everybody else watching this video. So uh, yeah, it's not a very quick process. However, it's very accurate and it just works for me. And there you have it. This is our next layer. As I said, we're gonna be engraving this so we can leave it as is, okay? Go ahead and save it as an SVG file. Now it's time for the next layer with the a little bit more major roads that actually we are gonna be cutting out, okay? So that will create another see-through 3D layer. We are following exactly the same steps, dragging the design, change the size of it. Now go on to path, trace a bitmap, again, leave the same options, press apply, and we've got our layer sorted, okay? That's the uh, aerial roads, we can delete the other one and make sure it's in the right position again. Now, as we do want this to be cut out, what we need to do, we need to go to a fill and stroke option. The fill needs to be um, taken off, so press on the X, then stroke, and then we want to have that, so the first option there. And the size, the thickness of the line, again, is not 0.06, is the best setting for cutting it with a laser. And that's what we've got. And now is the best time to delete uh, the items that you don't want to have on your map, very tiny um, objects on your map, or for example, the text that we've got down below. When you're happy with your design, what we need to do is to create another rectangle. This time, the size of it needs to be 100 by 100. And basically, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be cutting out everything in between the roads. So the roads, they need to be connected with the uh, inner rectangle. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So these are the roads that need to be connected to our rectangle. Select the rectangle and then the node tool, okay? We need to transfer it onto a convert selected object to path. So we can add additional nodes to the rectangle itself. I'm always adding two at each side, okay? That is just the easiest way to do it for me. And then press the break node tool, okay? We can delete the middle parts between our nodes that we created, and that will create a channel, a way that we need to uh, connect the roads. Again, select the roads, break the path, and we can delete the middle parts of those roads. And with the nodes that are still there, we can connect them to our rectangle, just like so. And you need to do that with every single road that um, is heading towards our rectangle, okay? These pieces will be holding the whole structure um, of the road, okay? Everything in between will be cut out. And this is the final result. All the roads are basically connected uh, with the inner square 
outer square is our border and I do have a feeling that these roads will be a little bit too narrow for the laser to cut out so what I'm going to do I'm going to spend an hour on shifting all the nodes to have those roads a little bit wider and in the same way I've sorted out the motorways as well and that's how they look like all right and as all the files are ready now is the time to turn on our small beast that will engrave and cut everything out for us let's go what materials and i'm going to be using for this project well as the base obviously plywood in my case three millimeters as you really don't want to have a thicker materials as then the end product would be well too thick However, I just want to uh, give you some ideas and maybe inspiration what else you could use. Yeah, sure, we're going to be painting this blue <laughs> to show off the water result, okay? However, what you can also use, for example, felt. This is one millimeter thick felt and it's just the texture. You can get it in multiple colors and this is perfect for a water background, okay? On top of it, sometimes if you want to create a map and there's no water, but you still want to have a bit of color and there is a park nearby or any greenery, well, tell you what, you can get green felt and use that as well, beautiful forest. You can actually engrave it, I score it slightly, make sure to test it out before as you actually don't need a lot of power to cut this through. But yes, you can actually slightly engrave this as well. So plenty of opportunity with felt of this type. Great idea. And of course, I've got some plastic as well in color blue. That's for the map with the sea. And I think this color is absolutely perfect for that. And again, different type of material. And this material is actually called PCW. Yes, you heard it right. It's more or less the same family as PCV. However, it does have a little bit different properties. First of all, it's a little bit lighter. It's a hard uh, foamish type of material, but it will be absolutely perfect for this scenario. And it will be cut with no issues by this machine as well. As you can see, I've got the base for cutting materials out as that's what we're gonna be doing as well. As you can see, hopefully, that's the two dots of the infrared laser and the blue dot laser as this machine packs both so you can really tackle some amazing projects here. And if you want to find out how to focus this machine and all the details, again, I do have a video on that and the link is down below. First of all, we're going to put in the New York water file. Okay, let's put that right in the middle. And in this vector file, we actually got three pieces. The outline that we need to cut out, the middle that we need to cut out, and then the um, rectangle that we did as well. Everything needs to be cut out. So let's select the whole thing, change our settings to cut. We're gonna go with 100 power. And the speed that needs to be at four millimeters per second. And now let's just frame our project, making sure we're in the right place. And as you can see, the framing option on this machine is absolutely fantastic. It shows you with the laser exactly where it's gonna go. Great feature on this for sure. Now I've had this Extel F1 model for a few months now, and I have to say it's not failed me yet. And it is producing quality products every single time. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about this machine, I've got a full video with plenty of tests. You can see exactly what it can do, how everything comes together and every other single information you may need. So in this video, I'm going to skip that. However, if you're thinking about buying this machine, I can fully recommend it to you. As I said, no issues, had it for several months. It just works flawlessly. And I've got some links for you down below in the description of this video. One thing, if I may add, grab yourself the air purification unit. It makes a world of difference and you can use it at home. Seriously, the fume extraction here and the purification is fantastic. That unit works great. And there you go. That took just over five minutes. 
However, you don't want to move this at all yet, okay? What we need to do now is to engrave the local roads onto this, okay? So let me just upload the next file and we'll continue. All right, this is our second layer and it does have the outline of the main box and that one you want to ignore. You don't want to engrave this, cut this or anything else, okay? It's just here to make sure we're in the right position when we're gonna be engraving everything out, okay? The middle, that's what we want, okay? That's the output and we need to press engrave and what settings are we gonna be using? 100% power and the speed is 150 millimeters per second. Everything else remains as is. Make sure in the right position. Hopefully you didn't touch our um, first layer. So we can just press proceed and off we go. And there we go. That's the first layer completed. Now you have to be careful with the size of this sometimes as it is a very um, complicated cut over here. It'll give me a few minutes to actually remove the middle part but in the meantime we're going to be cutting the next one out. Alright now I'm just going to cut out the main base and after that I'm going to cut out the main roads and the motorways as well. And that will be all the layers sorted for this minimap of New York. And that's it, after 2 minutes 33 seconds, the base is fully cut out. Right, let's add a bit of colour to our map. Obviously, we need the water section. So I'm just gonna paint this over with a brush. And now I'm going to leave that to dry. The next thing, the city itself. What I want to do here is just add a bit of a brown background to it. Not too much, it needs to be fairly light uh, so the lines of the city won't disappear. Now the main roads, I'm going to leave them as they are, so that will give a bit of a contrast to the whole thing. However, the top layer with the motorways, I want to paint those black. Alright, and I'm going to leave everything to dry out. Now it's time for the felt. I'm going to be using the blue one as water and I need to cut out the shape that will become the base. With materials like this, i.e. a lightweight uh, felt, make sure to tape it down otherwise it will just move on you as the fan extraction works. In my case the settings for cutting felt is 30% power and 20 millimeters per second. And you'll see why this shape in just a second when I'm going to be putting the map of my hometown together. And check that out, okay? We engraved on felt and we've cut that out as well. Absolutely brilliant and that's exactly what I need. You'll see this come together in just a second. Now it's time for my favorite place when I go on holidays, seaside. Uh, the city is called Darufko. So uh, that's the base and that's gonna be the main deep sea. Um, and that's the plastic sheet that I've told you before. So I'm gonna cut this out. This time I'm gonna lock it up as I don't want to have any fumes going outside. And best of all, with the fume extraction and cutting plastic, 
you're not gonna smell absolutely anything and all the harmful fumes are sorted out by the fume extractor absolutely perfect right I'm gonna cut out the rest of the layers and we're gonna start putting everything together and check these out everything's laid out ready to assemble and I'm just gonna be using CA glue to do that and that's the felt layer so I've got the part for the water and for the park as well check this out so it's gonna go on our base layer just like so and then over here we actually cut out the park bit and the water bit as well and when you put it together like so plus you've got engraved pathways in the felt as well I have to say that looks absolutely awesome right let's start putting everything together Now with this process, don't rush, take your time, do a layer at a time to make sure everything aligns correctly. To make sure that the, every single layer sticks correctly, just put something heavyish on top and leave it for a few seconds. And there you go guys, I think that came out absolutely awesome. And the base, that's the plastic, so you can use multiple materials, it doesn't have to be just plywood. Imagination is the key. For example, I'm going to show you the felt, how it looks like when it's all put together. And here they are, I think they came out absolutely fantastically, really love the look how they came out. And, you know, adding the felt, the green felt as the park bit, absolutely great. Blue felt as well as the water. I think it adds a bit more depth to it, an interesting look to it. And obviously, you know, to the touch itself, it does feel differently. So fairly unique map over here, guys. That's for sure. New York, <laughs> there you go. If you add a bit of color to it, a bit of paints as well you can create some really interesting uh, 3d effect over here with the highway being black and the main roads and then the local roads inside i think that looks really really cool and then the seaside as well adding different type of material again this piece of plastic at the back for the depth of the sea uh, a bit lighter tone of the blue to create shallower waters and then the port itself and the main road. I think they came out really, really cool. And the size is also unique and quite interesting. Perfect small gift for somebody and, you know, a fantastic business opportunity. Me and my wife, what we decided to do is actually have a small map for every place we go every summer with our kids. And on the back, we're just going to engrave the place, uh, when we went and what we did. So a very interesting and cool idea. I think it's a fantastic idea of keeping those happy memories alive. So uh, definitely a great project there, guys. And as you've seen, this little F1 from Extol did a fantastic job. And I have to say, I really love the combo with the air purification unit. There's no smell, there's no fumes, nothing at all. And you can tackle really cool projects like these as well. Perfect tool for it. I hope the process I use is clear enough for you guys. If you do have any more questions, you know where the comment section is, ask away. However, you know, I'm not saying this is the best and ultimate way to produce these. There may be a better way, maybe a quicker way. I don't know. That's what I do. That's how I create my maps. If you are interested in this little handy device, I've got some links down below for you to check it out. However, if you're thinking seriously about having a proper business with laser engraving and cutting, on top of that, I would definitely suggest you a P2 CO2 laser from Extol as well. I'm gonna have some links to my videos on that CO2 machine and some links to the store so you can go and have a look and check it out. These machines, they're definitely not cheap. 
unless you really load it, yeah, you're gonna buy it for DIY purposes. However, I would say these are more directed for a business purpose. But that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed the video, but don't go just yet. I've got some really cool playlists just over here. Click on those and maybe I'll find your next video to watch. Thank you very much, take care.